So thank you everybody for being here today. I hope you're well in this lockdown, possibly widespread situation. Uh, so far, so good. Amazing, amazing virtual conference. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about the Open Research Graph and um, and what activities we are doing in open air in, to foster open science. And uh, so, open air can uh, see. Uh, open air in, uh, in in a nutshell can be seen as as three main pillar, pillars of action and um, services, policies, and training. On on policy side, we provide guidelines. And I think one set of guidelines that's very uh, relevant for for this venue is the one about uh, soft the, there's going to be a release of new guidelines which are a little bit more inclusive, but I mean it's going to be a new version on the same uh, on the same at the, at the same link. The objective is, is clear, it's to elevate um, software, research software as a first citizen in scholarly communication. So that is, is appear as traditional literature, research data nowadays and so on. Uh, so that to, because making so would empower us to interlink research software to other publications and other research products in general. And uh, and so to make uh, research software citable, reusable, and reproducible, reproducible which is would, would be amazing uh, for us. There are require minimal requirements. Uh, the software has to be open source. It should be related to uh, a project, and there are only a few mandatory uh, fields information that uh, are. are required in order to to be valid and to be compliant uh, to the guidelines. The, the guidelines have been started to, to be adopted. Uh, EGI is fully compliant uh, and DO code is, is, is an endorser to provide some kind of marketing crosswalks between their own format and, and, a, and, a, and the guidelines we provide. Uh, in terms of practices, what we do is to basically foster uh, good behavior and, uh, and, uh, and trying to trigger positive feedback in, in open science because open science and open open source uh, are go really well together together and um, and with uh, it would be possible to bridge the gap between the two realms uh, by identifying source code with persistent identifier so that uh basically you can have every every software piece of software uh univocally identifiable and with some metadata attached to it and uh so that you know like you can you can also claim reward and uh, and uh, and merit for what you have been doing so far and uh the next step would be to to unleash the theory of peer review on, this, on software and on research software, which means that uh, some some indicators could be proxy for for, for a software metrics, so goodness, reliability, reuse, and so on. And uh, as well, like the open peer reviews, which are now trying to there are, there have been quite a few experiments in in, uh, in uh, big conferences about open peer reviews. They could be attached to software and give even more track record to that. And of course, all these uh, might have in the future, not at the moment, but we have been uh, talking with the European Commission, uh, might have a ripple effect onto the to high level policies. There might be calls and mandates for that are specifically addressing open source on research software uh, as the pretty, pretty much the same way to what happened with, uh, with open access publications. And um, there, there might be open source evaluators in, within the EC commission that try to assess uh, 
research, uh, research software that, that is uh, related to EU funded, publicly funded um, projects. This might foster also strategies at, at the commission level in order to solve problems, for example, about patenting and, uh, and trying to support better the, the development side of the research. In order to do so, I mean, all these is, it takes part, it takes its place within open air in the so-called open air research crowd. So whenever we, uh, I'm saying that because whenever we, uh, in, in our daily work as researchers or research uh, software engineers and so on, we tend to publish pieces of knowledge around the web, software on GitHub, or um, preprints, publications in a, in a, in a published repository, uh, and so on. So all these pieces of information are captured are materialized within the open air research graph. This is on the, the this one on the left is a very bird's eye view of the main entities that are that are present in, in the graph, in our graph. The central one is the product. It can be it's the only the only class that has uh, sub entities. It can be traditional literature that is intended to be read by humans. Uh, machine readable uh, uh, data, so research data, software, as I was saying, and, and there is another fourth category which is quite broad, which is other research products. It's kind of a cultural uh, concept to anything that doesn't quite fit the previous tree and, and that is not eligible to be a new, uh, a new category. For example, there are lots of, lots of concepts that are quite um, discipline specific or research community specific that are worth mentioning as an entity themselves in the graph, but they're by not being cross discipline, they cannot be elevated as first citizen. As well. And of course, there are a bunch of other entities which are uh, related to the project, a product might be related with the funding stream that's funding the project, and therefore, the product can be a relation between different kinds of products citations or kind of reuse or provided by relationship. We also have um, community and organization in the, in the graph. The community is a specific um, concept that tries to identify the group of interest of, of a, for, for, for for a certain part of the graph. For example, usually it can be thematic, for example, you know, European marine uh, research, which is the community we have in open air, or the European plate observation system. There are other communities that are instead like more transversal and they're like longitudinal, like the European grid infrastructure. And these communities are intended to, for monitoring purposes, to see return on investment, to see how the community is, is, is evolving over time, what are the what are the products that are pertaining to the community, so that so so has to give a slice of the old graph, customized to, as a as a customized view to the to the community of interest. What in order to uh, build this graph from scratch, what we do is basically harvesting. We harvest from institutional repositories, publisher repositories, and we have um, roughly 10,000 sources at the moment. We also look into research infrastructure because um, research infrastructures, which are these big clusters of, um, that have been funded in, in the last uh, 10, 15 years by the, by the EU, by the European Commission, they have a bunch of services that uh that are have been used uh, by researchers of specific communities in order to do their work and um one thing we do is is to open up them and uh, get all the stuff all the data that is, that's been published that would be just hidden inside but we open them up in order to expose these um these details 
in the open and uh, and we collect them as well and aggregate as, as entities in the graph themselves all this information is raw it's like crude oil so it needs to kind of mm, be processed in order to be to be taken to an acceptable form in order to be more valuable and we have mainly three different tasks we do uh, one is the most important is the duplication because we by, by aggregating from these many sources we might find very likely very very likely uh, multiple description for the same for the very same paper the very same piece of software or data so what we want to do is to get all the descriptions and try to infer the best description of all trying to put together all the details about the same entity of course we do this by matching and by trying to find which are the candidates that that, that make sense to to group together uh, there are also uh, there is also a, a mechanism for users in order to provide feedback so user can claim uh, can can claim information so they can claim links between for example uh, projects and publications between uh, software and literature software and data and so on and so forth and um, there is a last very important module, which is all the mining and inference uh, module that tries to scavenge the full text and uh, all the metadata in order to infer other relations between funding, um, publication and project, publication and uh, organization, and so on. Once the information is, is at a acceptable value, it fuels a bunch of services. We have monitoring services for funders, we have monitoring services for communities. Uh, we provide, um, we provide uh, services to, to feedback in the loop, the enrichment we make to providers themselves. So you know, like the content, the people that we harvest from will, can have a mechanism to get back, to get back the value. We, that is another service which is Explorer, it's basically the web portal, and Develop provides APIs for more savvy users to play. It's going to be all these, the, the graph as a whole is going to be uh, also a, core, a central part of the European uh, Open Science Cloud. Uh, so in a nutshell, the core mission is to provide open metadata research graph for, uh, of interlinked scientific projects with open access information linked to funding information and research communities. And we want these to be open, complete, deduplicated, transparent, participatory, decentralized and trusted. It's open because uh, we release, I mean, we, 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 we harvest everything either with a CC0 license or CC5, for example, Microsoft uh, academic graph, is a uh, system so everything we do has to be released with the uh, most restrictive uh, license which in in, in our case is uh, system but of course like we redistribute everything everything for free we release everything and we give everything back to, to in, in, in research it's um, the, the, the set, the plethora of, of sources opener harvested from. It's complete or is best effort complete because, I mean, it's in our interest to have all the um, community trusted sources in our, um, in our pool of, of data providers. There might be the case uh, that something is left out, in, in which case I, I, I please you to, to like, Send me a message if, if there's anything that's missing, uh, which is usually not the case, because I mean, you think about something, you name it, 90% of the times is inside already. But in a case, it's not just uh, write a hand, tell me, drop an email, and uh, our tech team will uh, take care of it. As I was mentioning before, is the duplicated. 
So there are a few uh, links um, to literature that this is how things are have been done in open air in order to to do the magic of the duplication. Uh, as I was saying, we try to have the best representation of all the records. We are not saying this record is better than the others. We try to, to get all the pieces of information and stick them together in order to give the best perspective of what's going on. And we do that for scientific products, so public literature, uh, research data, software, and for organizations, because organizations as well, when you collect from lots of different sources, they can come in, in, in a broad range of variations. Uh, open air, the, the, the graph is, is participatory, which means that anyone can take place. So um, anyone can, can have a role. So if you want to be part of it, either you are an institution repository or data archive, software repository, whatever, just, you know, like raise your hand and uh, Opener will be more than happy to talk with you and, and to harvest and ingest your content. It's transparent, again, because uh, we provide for every piece of information that's, uh, that's collected or mined or, you know, like uh, enriched in an automatic way. Uh, we provide uh, an indication on, on the provenance. For example, if something is mined by the inference mechanism, there will be a provenance uh, information saying, this, this this particular link between, I don't know, let's say uh, publication and uh, a project has been mined by this module and the trust of this, of, of this information that has been created is 0 0.9. So you, in principle, you should be quite sure that, 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 that the, the inferred information is some. And in principle, you can, you can also use the trust in order to prune anything that's below certain thresholds of your of your choice. As I was saying, uh, another key property of the craft is that it, we strive uh, to make it decentralized because um, we know that uh, like all these European projects are amazing and and uh, and um, Open Air has been running for ten years. We have been quite successful at not dying so far. And um, but we never know. So now open air is a service, which means that probably the European Commission doesn't want to make it without us. But who knows what's going to happen? And if at any point uh, open air ceases to exist, we want uh, not to disseminate, not not to lose the um, the value that has been created by so many rounds of funding and so many years of work. So we exchange anything we have with other graph initiatives, such as the research graph, Freya, and open citation. And we also uh, feed them back to the, um, to the data providers, to the data sources that at the beginning are the first uh, source of anything we have. So with the broker service, which is part of the provide uh, service of open air, we send everything back as notification to whomever is uh, subscribed to specific topics. So, this is how we lose our, our effort in, a, in, in, in possible catastrophic future events. Uh, the graph is trusted, and uh, we are trying to. Uh, do that also by integrating uh, other services and uh, we we have been uh, members uh, of orchid members since december so you can log in at the moment you can log in open air using your orchid uh, account as a single segment and uh, and you can and in the future you probably uh, one thing we want to do is to uh, basically sync your open air account and your orchid account and have uh, the same picture of the literature so, so to have to generate automatically claims you know open air uh, 
partner from your Orchid Pro. Right? So in order to have, um, um, uh, let's so to say, like the uh, uh, ground trees, a golden standard of claims that comes straight from Orchid and can cannot possibly be mistaken. So populating the graph. As software developers, the best thing you can do is go in to zenodo.org and register your software. It's, uh, it's amazing how Zenodo uh, gained momentum in the last years. Uh, here in purple, so in different colors, is different years from 2016 to 2019. And you can see how the, the number of uh, have increased uh in, in time and uh the, um, so the nodo is a is a hybrid is a hybrid repository it's a catch-all it has everything inside mm. but this is this is valid not only for the node is valid for lots of other other sources github you might say it's software anything anything i i harvest from github is software it's not true there might be publications as well Surprise, surprise. Uh, same for data sites. You might think they are data sets. Not true. Uh, there are publications there as well. So we had to, at the beginning, we were trying to have uh, one category for every data provider, but uh, recently we switched to kind of a heuristic. So any repository can provide any kind of, of, of uh, pro research product. Uh, can feed any kind of research product into the graph. So for any of those, we try to apply um, some rules and some heuristics in order to uh, classify in the proper in the proper box in the proper entity any any record we every record we we harvest. Uh, as I was saying at the beginning, we harvest also, we, we look into research infrastructures. This is uh, just um, a very specific example, the recent one, uh, because, um, for example, the, the European Plateau Observer, Observer, Observing System uh, is, is now able, by using the Open Air Connect services, is, is able to run their own uh, ex uh, in silico experiments on their own services and then with just pressing one button to publish all the artifacts like configurations parameters the workflows that have been used for the for the experiments uh, raw data and process data everything to plot everything on the node so there is this uh, kind of uh, seamless connection that's been provided by opener between who runs the core business and and uh, the scholarly communication side and this is what i uh, it's more details what i was talking about at, at this moment uh on top of uh, of all the ten thousand uh sources we have a couple of uh, exceptions because they have been pre-processed pre off band and those are skull explorer on one side and the, and the oi boost on the other uh Skull Explorer is used uh, even from, it's, it's, it's free. Again, it's another free service. Anyone can use that. There are APIs and we have been used by, by Elsevier for uh, Scopus uh, in order to get all the possible links between they, they might be interested into between publications and data sets. And we have quite outstanding, like, 20 million hits per month on that. It, it, it has become one of our flagship uh, services lately. So yeah, it provides four, 480 million bilateral links between literature and data. And on the other side, we have DOI Boost, which is our attempt into providing a better um, cross riff, let's say. I don't, I mean, cross riff is amazing. And, and it's, uh, it's the standard out there. But uh, we tried to um, get another handf handful of, of sources and put everything together, so, so to enrich a bit, uh, a bit some some of the records that were not uh, so great in culture. And uh, by by crossing the information with uh, Microsoft Academic Graph, they will and, uh, and 
ORCIDs have uh, 85 million publication sets uh, that are kind of, you know, they have a very sound representation. And we try to keep them up to date every six months. It takes some time because they are processed not manually, of course, but uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a different uh, workflow. So it has, it has to be run uh, outside the automation workflow that, that, that on top of which uh, open, air, open air runs. And in any case, all these has been, it will be dumped and kept up to date every six months and you can find it on Zenodo. Uh, another thing that we do on, uh, on, on raw data we harvest is to apply some kind of information propagation. So here the, the um, intuition that there are certain, uh, certain logic chains that can be applied to data. So if certain conditions are met, then you can infer certain other links and certain, certain other relations between entities. For example, if a, if a publication has been funded by a project and the publication is, is linked to a data set because the data set is, is, is provided by the publication, then the data set is also linked to the, set, to the very same project. And this is a very simple one. There are more com complicated ones, um, but it's all, the, the, in a nutshell, the, the idea is to use certain domain knowledge and the presence of certain relations in order to uh, infer missing ones. And this is, in, a, in, a, in an overview, the numbers of, 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 of open air, of the information space, which is in uh, harvesting in, in open air. The, the, the one that's uh, actually in production has, has a much lower uh, content than, than, than what is, uh, available in beta and which is the, the subject of this uh, presentation, the graph. And uh, it should be promoted as, as production in spring, uh, plus minus COVID fluctuation, because uh, we are kind of slowed down by remote working, but it should happen in spring. So the switch, the full switch between uh, what I've been telling you now and what's currently in production, it should take place in, um, I think, the last few months. But anyway, in a, in a, in a nutshell, 10,000 10, data sources, uh, 340 million records, and 12, 12 million of uh, publication full text, and uh, 960 million of links, including the ones that are uh, produced by Scholex. We have a number of licenses, one with Microsoft Research, because uh, we harvest periodically the content, the other one with Unpayable, Orchid, as I was saying, and, uh, and finally the, the open tent graphs uh, to, towards which we redistribute everything we have. So, yeah, so this is the roadmap to production. We, we were in, at the beginning of the year, we were in uh, open consultation phase. I just checked, if you go on uh, bexploreropener.eu, there is still this uh, give, give us feedback button, even though it was supposed to be disappeared, but it's still there. So you can, if you, if you click on that, you should have a Trello dashboard in order to leave feedbacks and uh, make questions, otherwise you can write me or Paolo Mangi, and we will be happy to, to read your input. This is, yeah, how the Trello dashboard appears. And that would be all from my side. Thank you. Any question? Oh, thank you very much, uh, Andrea. That was really interesting. So we've got a little bit of time um, for questions. Um, if people want to raise their hand, I'll try and coordinate the things. Any questions at all? Okay, we've got one. Oh, okay. So, um, Giacomo, do you want to go first? Okay. So, hi, Andrea. Thanks for your uh, interesting talk. I was just wondering, how do you see the European Commission uh, implementing 
or uh, planning the support to reuse of software. Do you see that? Do you think that there will be calls in the future uh, whose specific topic will be building up on mm. existing pieces of software, or uh, will this be give more points to two projects if they mm. build up on previous um, produced software? No, I'm just maybe, curious to see. Yeah, no, maybe in 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 the in in the European Commission uh, view, reuse is a um, software reuse goes hand to hand. I, I think it will have the same the same uh, in their view will have the same weight as the data research data reuse. So it's something they could. I mean, for for research data reuse, they they don't have calls to projects we they nonetheless they come up with mandates or with best practices or suggestions and policies in order to uh, foster research data reuse so there are no calls but there are guidelines and the same thing can can be with with the with research with the research software so there might not be Calls building on top of other pieces of software that have been uh, written in in, uh, in in other years, but there might be uh, mandates that uh, or or um, or mandates or other policies in order to evaluate research quality or to foster uh, research uh, research software reuse rather than you know uh, explicitly find. Really. Thank you very much. Um, any other questions? I see a hand. Yeah, Stefan. Hi, thanks. It's very interesting. Um, I do have a question from a developer perspective. So, if I wanted to look at the Open My Research graph and find all the stuff that's in it, that should be easy enough. How sure can I be that I wouldn't miss a larger portion? of research software that's been published and registered out there in your estimate? Mm, so, I, so I repeat the question. Uh, you, you would like to know to some, to some extent, what's the kind, let's say, what is the probability of having all the software you, mm, you might be in, that might be relevant for you within the graph? Well, um, it's, I think, I'm unfortunately, I think it's a metric I, I, I can't really say. I mean, I cannot come up with the, it's, it's going to be seven out of 10, it's going to be inside. Um, we can go though by, by the data providers. We have GitHub, Skull Explorer, Zenodo, which contains, you know, 80% uh, of, of research software that's out there is either on GitHub or Zenodo. Software heritage is another. We 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 are trying to generate links, trying to infer links between software we have and and uh, and uh, software heritage, in order to always have uh, you know another kind, another layer of mapping between what's inside open air and uh, and uh, what is in software heritage, which is a much broader spectrum uh, project that that's not only about. Uh, research software and um, so like I would say that the probability of finding relevant information within open air goes hand to hand with the names you see you see collected so if there are any mm, any worth mentioning source that's missing that might uh, might raise doubts of, of the completeness of what's inside. It, it, it's worth uh, sharing the, the doubts, and, and of course, it will be added if it's, uh, if it's relevant. Thanks very much. Do you have time for a very quick uh, follow-up question? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Stefan. So, um, especially with sources like GitHub and Software Heritage, you were saying that you could, you can't be sure that you've actually collected research software. Um, do you have a mechanism of filtering 
these kinds of or will they just end up in the in the graph regardless? They they will they will end up in a graph and uh, the 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 first barrier of aggregation will will try to uh, to steer them in the proper place. So if for um, I, I'll make another another example in in data sites which is, I mean, data sites uh, is, is the, um, the biggest data repository, I mean, data mining, research data mining place. So if you want a DOI for your data sets, you go to the data set. You might think you will get only data sets from there, but not true, you get all the publications. There is, I mean, there is a simple, kind of simple way to tell which is which. And the same thing, you can do that with, uh, with GitHub, you can try to understand whether you're dealing with, with, with source code or with publication. And, uh, and so that, uh, that, that, that's how basically we do. If, if we are not sure of what we're doing, we put it in, in the other natural uh, uh, class, which, other, which is other research problems. Thank you. Okay, that's great. I think we've got a couple of questions from Neil. Neil, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, um, I was just taking a little look at some of the, the things that you've linked to and I had two questions. Maybe I'll do I'll do the second one first because it's the naive one. Um, what tools do you recommend for working with the graph dumps? So what does your team already use? Um, uh, so, yeah, so the we are using uh, we are using the, the whole infrastructure um, because of course when you dump it, it needs to be uh, in whatever format like XML or JSON whatsoever, but before the 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 export procedure, it may Hadoop. So have we work with Spark mainly? Spark and Hue. It's it, 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 it's like in in tables on a, on a HDFS. It's loaded and it's it's uh, processed in a parallel way. Uh, all the pipeline has been reprocessed now to be parallel and working either with, uh, with uh, Hadoop, uh, Spark, MapReduce, more Spark and MapReduce now. So yeah, it's the size, let's say that the problem is the, the size can be quite uh, limiting in terms of the, the full gamut of solutions you might, you might take in, in, into account or, pro, or playing with that. So. Okay. Um, do you have any support for GraphQL? Uh, um, not really. For we we had uh, back in two thousand seventeen, we had a task for that, uh, which is actually still ongoing. But it, it basically maps a um, uh, part of the a sub a sub part of the graph into RDF and uh, so it, it would it, it would be possible to to um, query with Sparkle. Okay and and then the second question um, I had was uh, do you know if there's any a duplication of things like well particularly software in the graph so do you know if there are are records which are actually conceptually the same thing but are recorded as two separate things in the graph? Um, I don't have examples about that. While I have examples for data, for example, but uh, for software, I don't. Uh, I presume that um, as, long as, as long as multiple sources are, are, are harvested, the, say, GitHub and software heritage on the other side, it, it hides the um, chance to find the same, the same piece of knowledge into different places, and so you need to uh, to deduplicate them uh, as well. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, we've got a little bit of time if there are any other questions at all for uh, Andrea. Okay, so I'm not seeing any hands being raised. Um, I'm sure if you do have questions, if you could put it in the Google Doc, I'm sure Andrea would be able to happy, happy yeah. to answer those later.